Hey, ATA Nation and Karate Atlanta family, this is Mr. Van Eck from Karate Atlanta Tequila. And uh, today we're here for our XMA, our Extreme Friday, our Fantastic Friday, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and today I know we have a couple things we're going to go through. We have some uh, different kicking stuff that if you guys have been watching the other videos, uh, we're going to take some of those kicks and we're going to build off of them. Because before we said there's different setups that you have, body control drills that will help you learn the basics of how to go into some cool XMA kicks. Whether it's jumping, whether it's manipulating it's those uh, same regular kicks that we have of but typical XMA kicks, front kick, round kick, and hook kick. You can do them where you're going down to the ground. You can put them in the air. Of course, you can add those spins. So there's a lot of different ways that you can be creative to manipulate those things. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Today, we're also gonna go through the weapon that's supposed to happen this cycle is our commas. And I know some of you guys may have your commas. Some of you guys may not have commas, which will give you guys another fun drill you guys can do. I know most of us are doing nunchucks for the cycle. Whether you have two nunchucks like these or one nunchuck, you can start working on some of those drills. So we're gonna start with our commas. Real, real easy stuff. Before we even start with our weapons, we're just gonna warm up our wrists. Got our windshield wipers back and forth. All right, warm up those wrists back and forth, making sure they're going ready for your joints to go. Same thing with our elbows, get our shoulders, going slow first, waking everything up, forwards and backwards. Same thing side to side. And then same thing, twisting that body, stretch that back, oh, just a little bit, back and forth, before we kind of get into some of the stuff. So we're gonna start with our commas. And if you don't have commas, it's easy. Most of these moves you can do, with just your opening hand techniques by making them knife hands, rich hands, stuff like that. So if you've done commas before for XMA and everything, we wanna hold them in the middle. Traditionally, if you don't know the history behind commas, they're used to cop, uh, chop down different crops in ancient Asia, kinda of like a scythe and uh, the blades at the bottom down here. So for control, we're gonna hold them in the middle and work on some of this fancy cool stuff before we do the fancy cool stuff, you gotta know the basics, which if you've ever done any basic XMA, you have basically just a chop and a punch. And if you've watched, a, or a stab of commas, and if you've watched or done some other things of commas before, for traditional commas, when they stab, or kind of stabbing at an angle, and this is so the blade can kind of curve through the bones and whatnot of your body, for XMA, it's gonna be a straight punch. So it kind of comes up a little bit, and it comes down as a punch. So up, boom, punch, punch. So let's just warm up. Going through those basics, same thing when we chop. I don't want my wrist bent or anything. That's an easy way. You don't do a knife gun strike like this. That'd be bad. Ugh, I want to make sure my wrist is straight. So chopping forward, we have one shot forward, stab. Same thing on the other side. Chop, stab. And go slow at first. Then we can add a little bit of speed and power. Notice we're still chambering our chop. Other hand still back by our chest. Punching straight forward. Chamber one, two, three. Four. Let's just do this 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now make sure you still have a good snap on each chop, each stab. And again, you don't have to do it at my speed. You can take your time. And uh, right now we did everything facing forward. It's easier to see in the camera. For XMA, of course, we always like to use those angles so we can make things dynamic. So I would hit up this way. One, two, to the corner. Three, four, to the corner. Then we can come to the center, step back, double stab. And that's where we can get creative with some of these common stuff, which is all the same hand techniques that you have, hand combinations. One of the fun drills you can do I do this with my XMA students, my XMA program, is we might start a combination and create it with open hand, then we might give you a weapon to say, now emulate that combination with your weapon. So if you're really good at this, or you really want to challenge, take some of the combinations that Master Burns or myself have gone through for our uh, Extreme Fridays, take those combinations and try to pick up a weapon and try to emulate that same combination with the weapon in your hand. So remember, when we're doing weapons, we're focusing on the either manipulation of the weapon or focusing on the actual technique and use of the weapon, not just doing cool sp spin kicks and moves while holding the weapon. If I'm not actively using the weapon while doing some of these techniques, it's not really gonna help me or help enhance my weapons form. It's still all about the weapon when you're doing weapons. 
open hand, it's a little bit different. Doesn't mean you can't kick or do cool spin kicks and stuff. We just wanna to try to apply the weapon here. So we're gonna give you guys an easy combination. Before we do that, we're gonna do one more super pivotal uh, comma strike that helps you, which is our seven cut. All right, now in traditional commas, the seven cut's a little bit different. I've been told, I've heard that it goes to the eyes and then the neck. For a XMA seven cut, we want a big movement to make it look dynamic. So again, I would start either of my commas back by my chest. I like to start with one chop, then I'm going to cut across one, two, one, two. So it makes a big X across. Boom, same thing. One, two, one, two. And you're really letting your wrists and that like inner forearm block shine through to make that power. Wrist, strike, wrist, strike. All right, so let's go ahead and do 10 of those seven cuts as well to help you warm up. Then we'll start to put it together in a combination. So we might start, chop, seven cut, seven cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we should have that down now. So now let's put it together for a combination. So I can, I always like to start from a low block stance, whether the comma is up or to the side. It's kind of a preference, doesn't matter which one you do. And the combination we'll work on today, it's from the comma performance form too. So you're gonna go chop, seven cut, seven cut, stab. We're gonna go the other way, chop, stab. And from here, you can put any of those specialty kicks in here. For this cycle, you guys have already checked it out a little bit. It's supposed to be the Autobahn, which is a tornado kick with a hook kick afterwards, spin hook kick afterwards. All right, so again, doing the combination, still gonna go through slow. With chop, seven cut, seven cut, stab, chop, stab. And from here, step up block. Prep yourself for that kick pass, trick pass, whatever you're gonna do. All right, and in a moment, we're gonna go through some fancy stuff with our commas, how you can enhance this. Let's go through the combination again though. So we'll back up so you guys can see the footwork and the stances. Good front stances, shifting that weight, making power. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Easy, let's go a little bit faster this time. Ready and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, boom. Same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, boom. Now, this is still looking pretty easy and basic. Your goal is that every time you do a chop and a stab, it looks like it's a, a movie star fight scene where you're chopping through everyone. So you wanna make sure those chops aren't just fast and sloppy, you wanna make sure you go slow and build good technique first. Then you can start to add speed. Going one, two, three, four, five, six, boom, boom. As you get this down, give it to pick up the speed a little bit. Boom, making it strong and then adding, of course, your drama and intensity. So now that we got some cuts of our commas, let's work on some comma tricks that you guys can do. We have wrist rolls, we have finger rolls, and we have, I'm sure you guys have all seen it in XMA Division, the cool different illusion releases. Those are the three tricks we're gonna go through right now. We have from here, working on these comma spins. When I do my wrist roll, I'm actually doing a figure eight right now. Easiest way to learn this is put your commas at the bottom. I always like to think like Spider-Man, I'm using these finger and thumb to spin everything. Everything else doesn't let go, it's just rotating around. So it goes down, Spider-Man out, leave the comma between my thumb and my pointer finger. I'm gonna roll it back around. So it's going forward. And it might be hard to do with both commas first, so it might be good to do one hand at a time. Other hand, as you get it better, it'll go a little bit faster. I'm not just doing this. That's not rotating the comma. It might look flashy, but it's not really gonna help me. It's going around. The actual practical, practical excuse me, application for this is if I was in a fight and someone grabbed my wrist, I would do this comma roll so I could cut and get their hand off my wrist. So I would roll, all right, I can go forward, you can go backwards. All right, if you're like a drummer, if you have like a drumstick, I'm sure you guys have all done this drill, where you just spin the drumstick or spin the drumstick. It's the same thing, just with our commas. All right, so that one's a little tricky. It takes some practice, but as you get it down, you'll be able to go a little bit faster. Now, in that combination, we can do the same thing. Before I start, I can spin this comma and then hit. Boom, 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 boom. We can add that roll here and then step. Going slower, spin first, chop, 
Sub and cut, sub and cut, stab, chop, stab, bring the commas in with that roll, double stab. Then I can step back and block, get ready for all my kicks, all that good stuff. So again, first one is our oh, excuse me, wrist roll. Once I get this down, I work on just doing a figure eight with it. It goes outside, inside, outside. So when you do it fast, it looks like I'm just doing this, but slow comes back and around. And to do it slow, you're gonna have to use your elbow. See how my elbow's engaged there a little bit. As you get faster, just like any other spinning nunchuck, comma, anything, I'm gonna be able to use just my wrist. Then I can use the full thing back and forth. And again, usually it's gonna take a little bit more time to work on your non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so my right hand was really easy to learn. My left hand took a lot of extra practice. Then as you get better, you should be able to make them the same. That's the goal. Now the second trick that we have is that finger roll. Finger roll is one of the funnest things you can do working with your commas, practicing, and it's not too hard to learn. It just takes a lot of trial and error. That's the biggest thing. So for my comma, if you guys remember from the sword video, if you watch the sword video, first thing you need to do is find the balance point of your comma. Oop, so I have my finger here. It's, mine's kind of right at the edge of my grip tape. So once I get it there, I'm just gonna kind of flick my comma so it rolls over that finger. Find that balance point and then flick it over. So you can go, whoop, that was a bad one. You can go forward, you can go backwards, all that type of stuff. Then you work on doing one at a time. Once you get one down with both hands, then you can work on, excuse me, that's a good moment to edit, cut. <laughs> I dropped it. All right, then you can work on also going with them together, together, rolling them together. And of course you can do lots of cool stuff with this as you get better you can work on doing two spins one two same thing on the other side go on work on that left hand a little bit one two that type of idea so we already did wrist rolls got finger rolls now it's time for the cool releases the juggling of the commas so for the commas and juggling releasing them it's not too crazy. The one that you guys probably see in XMA all the time is when they just kind of pop this comma up and they let the other hand go underneath it. So first thing is just working on having the air awareness of popping the comma up. Doesn't matter what hand you do it with. The other hand, if this hand is popping, this is just gonna make a circle. So usually people start with a small circle so they make sure they can catch it. They pop it up. Other hand wrist goes underneath that wrist and then I pop it here. Same thing the other side. Work on just popping and then Boom, back and forth. You can also work on, of course, the juggling of the comma up and down. That one's usually not as fancy. Doesn't look as cool in a form, but there's other things you can do where instead of maybe holding it this way and popping this way, maybe I'll hold it sideways. All right, some people do this so they can switch their grip on the comma, or maybe I switch, now it's in reverse grip, and I can come and attack the other way with it. So there's a lot of cool things you can put together with your wrist rolls, adding it to your cuts, boom, boom. Boom, or your finger rolls. You can work on adding that finger roll into other different techniques. A transition, you can make it different, you can have it go sideways, a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. All right, and again, this is just the beginning. And then we have those releases, or maybe you're combining, you go, you go spin, cut, finger roll, into release, or maybe it's different, maybe it's behind my back. I can do the same thing where I come here, go over my arm, and then spin and catch. So lots of cool stuff you can do with the commas, then you can put it together kind of in a combination. So we'll try to put all three of those things together. So again, we'll go slow. We went chop, seven cut, seven cut, stab, chop, stab. From here we went spin, wrist roll in, double cut, and from here I can take this comma, I'll use that illusion, release, finger roll, and release again, and boom, finish. So again, Chop, seven cut, seven cut, stab, chop, stab, wrist roll together, double stab, block, illusion, wrist roll, finger roll, release. The goal is to catch the comma. This one will need the most, I think. So we'll do the combination again. Chop, seven cut, seven cut, stab, chop, stab, wrist roll together, double stab, block, Illusion, release, finger roll, behind the back, and stab, finish. 
And again, this is just an example. You guys can put together whatever you'd like. That's the fun part. So I think we got it for all of our commas. Let's look at another weapon you guys may have, especially if you're a higher rank color belt, or if you're a black belt, you should have this through going through the color belts, but we have our double nunchucks. And this is actually my least favorite weapon because it's so hard to control. It doesn't mean I didn't spend a whole bunch of time practicing it to make myself better. Because again, there's always a subject in school, you're like, ah, oh, I don't like this subject, but it doesn't mean that you can't get something out of it. Because I've been working on nunchucks, a lot of these nunchuck tricks will help me with my commas, will help me with my traditional martial arts, will help you with a lot of things, especially working on having both hands for good hand-eye control. So for our nunchucks, there's a couple easy things you can do. You can put one finger between the chain or the rope. You can do regular XMA hand combos. The most normal or regular basic nunchuck combos where both of them start on one side, I call it the X strike. So you're gonna strike down one, bring them up on the other side, down two. Uh, making sure I'm holding them at the top. One, two. And then we can add those stances, make a little more power. One, two, one, two, one, two. That way you add that power. Part of the power of our, any of our strikes, whether it's weapons, nunchucks, commas, or open hand, is when you shift that front stance power. One, two almost like your Elvis or more relatively new. You got that Shakira with those hip movements. All right, so you wanna make sure you have those hip movements with those strikes to create that power. So again, this is the basic one. A little bit more advanced is where we separate them. Where one comes down, as my other nunchuck strikes, I switch it up to my shoulder, reload to the other side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boom, 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 boom. And again, adding our stances. Boom, 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 boom. Shifting on that second strike. Then you can put them together. And the next part, obviously of nunchucks, is you wanna start adding some of the cool spins or some of the other strikes. So of nunchucks, you have some easy control drills. Starting first with just your arms, up and down. Try to make sure they're together. I'm not going all the way back. Might whack me in the head like that. I'm just going under the arm, over the shoulder. Under, over, under, over. And again, you might have to start with one hand at a time for most of these drills. Once you get comfortable, you can put them together. Then we have the same thing for alternating. And then of course we have with spins. You gotta make sure you can spin them forward and you gotta make sure you can spin them backwards. Once you have that down, put them with those arm swings. So you spin down, up, down, up. Then you can do it with the alternating, but then add your spins. Again, this is one of the hardest ones to start with. If you got this down, awesome. If not, work on doing the same thing one arm at a time. And then try to start linking them together. Going slow, and obviously you can go faster. And similar to commas, there's no secret trick to make you better at nunchucks. It's just a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error, and unfortunately a lot of bruises. <laughs> so those bruises come into play too. So a couple of nunchuck tricks you guys can work on. Easiest one that you might have learned in traditional class is just your wrist roll. So I teach it where we make it like a clock. I'm gonna let the chain go over to my knuckles and I'm gonna catch it and then nunchuck and reverse grip and go back and forth. All right, the goal is to do the other side, same thing. Once I can do it in front of me like this, then I can also start working on putting where maybe I do one wrist roll, get some reverse grip and I can spin it back up. Or we can work on the traditional triangle strike where I spin them here. I can either bring them back the other way or I can bring them both back up to the top and then work on those spins too. So to try to put some of this stuff together for our nunchuck combo, we have this one right here. So we have one, two, single, 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 double, double, then we go single to the leg and then big boom, strike. That's the knockout strike. So starting again. Single shift, single, single shift, single, double, double, leg, leg, and knockout. Again, single, 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 double, double, single leg, single leg, and knockout. Now a little bit faster. So we have boom, 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 boom. boom. And again, single. Oh, one 
more time. And then, of course, working on some more kicks that we can put into those. We'll have to check that for next time, guys. We're out of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed some of our Extreme Friday tips. Working on some commas, working on some chucks, trying to combine those combos, or take one of our weapon combos and apply it with your hands. Try to emulate or the vice versa. Take the weapon combo, or excuse me, take a hand combo, try to apply it with your weapon. It doesn't have to be these two weapons. It could be sword, it could be bow staff, whichever you like. One of my favorite students working with a three sectional staff. She has to get really creative to try to emulate these. Well, that's it for now, guys. We'll see you later.